Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It is Wednesday. The week just flies by when you're enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. Good morning, Andrew. Manu, good morning, Andrew. Let's get the questions rolling. Remember, Friday, we're doing our training on manifestation, how to get what you want, both physically and emotionally, spiritually, financially. Mike, welcome, 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 everyone. So good to have you here. 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Colleen, happy Wednesday to you. Glad to sound great. Let's pin that up. How do you join the free trainings, right? Been doing them 20 years. All you got to do is email me, david at dmeltzer.com, or join our text community, 949-298-2905. Yes, it's okay to start over, start again, restart, get back up, get restarted, whatever you want. Take inventory of your values every single day and don't be afraid of being a hypocrite. Uh, it just means you're changing, growing, and accelerating. Or it means you're driven. Enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential is being driven. The most common denominator between successful people and all others is the need to be what they must be, to be driven. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Hello, my sex universe. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Stone Dog, welcome as well. Let's get some questions rolling before we bring on some important guests today. Let's see here. What did you think of the presidential debate yesterday? (laughs) I think they have to learn about radical humility. That's what they have to learn about. So uh, let's figure it out. Um, My friend, uh, that debate seemed like an abortion. No offense, but uh, I think it was unconstitutional. (laughs) At least Amy Barrett would say so. Ugh, I cannot believe how those people engaged. Not using our higher selves. Let's just put it that way. Christy, thank you. Welcome for joining as well. Jeff, welcome, welcome, welcome. Chaz, it's always good to see you as well. Let's keep these questions coming. Uh, Let's live by our higher selves. Do you use a vision board for manifestation? Yes, I do. I use many different things. Part of Uh, the manifestation process is to take nothingness and make it a possibility by thinking about what you want. Giving attention and intention to it makes it a probability. Figuring out the strategy, discipline, and awareness in order to materialize it. You are a 3D printer of your manifestations. That's what we're going to do. Uh, Here we go. What would you tell someone who thinks manifestation is BS? Well, it depends on your definition of manifestation. (laughs) <laughs> right? So if they think it's BS, I'd first ask them, well, what is manifestation? Wow, we got a Hall of Famer in the house. I'm bringing them on. I was just talking about Driven, and what do you think? Prepared? Yes, I am. There he is, Donald Driver, talking about Driven. <laughs> David, what's going on, man? Hey, it's good to see you. You too. How, how's the business? Man, it's going well. I can't. I cannot complain. Um, I think everyone had a struggle during covid But, uh, you know, we opened back up March 18th, man, and we've been going full circle ever since then. So it's been truly a blessing. Yeah, and keeping everybody safe. But I think the effects of staying in shape, eating right, doing all the things that you teach people to lead fitness is more powerful than not having your facility open as long as you're careful. Yeah, I mean, I think that was the key. I think a lot of people now, I've seen more people training now, working out, walking, um, jogging than it's ever been in the history of, of our lives. I mean, so I think people know that COVID was a big hit for a lot of people. And now it gives the people that platform to say, you know, something I really need to live a healthy lifestyle. And uh, they're doing it now. So it's good. Yeah, man. Sugar Ray Leonard, he uh, inspired me in March. He's like, just run 100 miles a month, man. You'll be fine. Do the road work, Dave. (laughs) (laughs) He goes, I've tried to teach you to box. That ain't ever happening. But I know you can run. Exactly. So just keep running and eat right. And I, I will tell you, though, I've never put this many miles on and I've never felt better. Uh, and there's a lot to be said about just getting out there and moving. Um, you know, one of the reasons I wanted you to come on here and invite you is that I've been dealing with so many entrepreneurs, so many people during what they consider is a compressed time of uncertainty. And you wrote a New York Times bestselling book called Driven. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people have different strengths different weaknesses. But the one thing that I think determines how close to our potential we can become is how driven we are. I say the common denominator of we must be what we can be. Mm -hmm. What are some of the aspects of being driven? Because, you know, 14 seasons, Super Bowl champ, 
you know, you may not be the best athlete ever to play your position, kind of like Jerry Rice, not mm -hmm. the best athlete ever to play the position, but absolutely the most driven. Yes. And where does that come from? And, and how do we transfer that over to people in business and family and life? You know, I think the biggest thing is you have to have a purpose. Um, you have to have a purpose of why you do the things that you do. You know, I, I tell people all the time is that, you know, I wasn't the best. I wasn't the best athlete either. You know, I went to Alcorn State, great division one, double A school, uh, HBCU. Now where, as you know, Deion Sanders is going to Jackson State. So that was our competitive and our rival. Um, but I think it's just to be driven. People told me that I wasn't going to never play in the National Football League. Um, and me being a seven round draft pick. Uh, at 213, who would have ever thought I would make the team and then to go on to be the all-time Packer League receiver in franchise history? No one ever expected that. So, you know, but I had a purpose. I think my skills made my purpose even bigger. And that's what I tell a lot of my people. I say it's skills versus purpose. Whatever your purpose is allows your skills to get even better. And regardless of what you do in the corporate world, uh, in the fitness world, uh, in the sports world, it's whatever your purpose is and what drives you. And for me, it was making sure that my family got out of poverty. I mean, that was the, the key for me is to make sure that my mom never had to work again. Uh, my grandparents never had to work and, and me to take care of them for the rest of their lives. Uh, I know what it feels like to be homeless and I never wanted to go back to that again. And so anytime I can put a smile on people's face, knowing that I've given them that their purpose, I think I've done my part. And that purpose, you know, makes us feel anointed in some respects. And both of us carry a lot of faith in what we do. Our, our names, you know, is so interesting. You know, my name means beloved servant. Mm -hmm. Your name, Donald Driver. Both <laughs> we grew up, you know, single mom, struggling and driven to do in what we can be. But beyond the purpose side of it, we also have planning. Mm -hmm. You know, we stick to a disciplined, consistent behavior. You've always had a plan. You know, other people may have laughed at your plan, scoffed at you, made fun of you. I can imagine in Alcorn State telling, you know, your friends, I'm going to play in the NFL and be the greatest receiver of all time, Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champ, right? And you're, you literally are the Wisconsin Athletic Hall of Fame chair or president, aren't, aren't you still today? Correct. And people laughed at you. And, you know, they, they didn't believe you. What was the plan when everybody doubted the plan? How do I prove them all wrong? I think that's the key. But, you, you know, you have to prove something to yourself first. You know, we have to know who, who we are as individuals. And that was my key is to say, OK, I know who I am as a person. I know that I can play this game. I know that I can, you know, make success out of my life uh, and be able to carry my name. At the end of the day, that's all I have is my name. And I wanted to make sure that people understood that. And so, you know, so many people would have said, who would have thought a kid from the inner cities of Houston, Texas, from the from the hood, right, would go on to play in the National Football League for 14 years. Um, become a Super Bowl champion, be the all-time Packer League receiver in first-star history, write a book that becomes a New York Times bestseller author, and now, David, to have my own shoe come out. I mean, who would ever thought that, you know? And, and more code, they gave me that platform. And so there's a great opportunity for what the future holds. Um, and I want to teach young men out there that you can be anything you want to be. When people doubt you and say you can't do it, you got to get back up, man. One of my favorite quotes is what Muhammad Ali said, is it's okay to get knocked down. But to stay down, there's something wrong with that. And uh, I've been knocked down. You've been knocked down. But we keep getting up and swinging. And, uh, and that's the key. Yeah, if we can look up, we can get up. I, when I lost everything that first morning and I had to go tell my mom I lost her house and she had to move <laughs> out. It, and I was literally, the only reason I wanted to be rich was the buyer of that house. I remember telling myself 20 times in bed, all right, if you can look up, you can get up. I was yeah. tears coming out. I'm like, I can, I can do this. Uh, <laughs> one important statement uh, that I need to tell everyone, size nine. I wear a size <laughs> nine. Size nine, I will DM you, text you my number, my address. I got you, I got you. Them. I will tell you, there's a fortune. You better save a, a lot of the original pairs because forget what they're worth today. Anybody out there, if you don't think these shoes are going to be collector's items, so uh, Nike sends me every once in a while some shoes like Travis Math Matthews or whatever his shoe. Yeah. I was about to open them and wear them. He sent me a pair. My kids were like, Dad, those are worth thirty five hundred dollars. Don't put them on. <laughs> I was like, Oh shit! I'm gonna pay for your college with all these tennis shoes. Size oh, nine, okay. everyone. I'm a collector of tennis shoes now, and these are a classic. Go buy two pairs, one to wear, one to keep as a collector's item. I promise you. Uh, anyway, where can people find the shoes? They're going to be, uh, they come out in 2021. Uh, the shoes will be out late November, but they are going to be, you're going to go to morecode.com. Um, the good thing is you go to put my name in, last name, discount code, it'll be driver20. 
give you an opportunity to get a discount. Right now, you can buy anything on More Code's website, and you get a 20% discount using uh, Driver 20. So that that's the key. I can't wait to design these shoes. It's going to be unique and different. It just gives kids an opportunity to know that you can do anything. I'm a big fashion guy, David. I love dressing up. Uh, so it gives me that platform to be able to show. I told somebody, you know, who would have ever thought their 17-year-old son that's a hell of an athlete would have wanted to dress like his 45-year-old dad? Well, my son wants to dress like his dad. So it's a good thing. That is so cool. I always tell, <laughs> I always tell my kids, Who'd have thought your middle-aged mutant turtle 52-year-old dad <laughs> would have more followers on Instagram than all of you combined? Take that. Take that to my three teenage daughters. They want to be me. That's it. Yeah, I, I love it. But see, this is the thing. You don't remember this, right? But you came to my gym. Oh, I remember. Oh, you remember. And look what I got. Y'all think it's crazy around here. Look at this. This nice. is the love right here, baby. This is the love we have. And you for do so much for the community. And yes. You know, I had your CEO of Moral Code as well on uh, the playbook as well, which we got to get you on the playbook yeah. too. But more importantly, you're such a good teammate. Now, your old CEO on the field, I had on the playbook as well, Brett Favre. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that you do so well beyond the individual pursuit of your potential is to be able to manage the collective consciousness the team and you do that i've been to your fitness center there it's a team that's there not just the team of the people that you work for you but it was a team of all the people that work out there and then within the community from the time that i landed people were talking about you talking about this you know energy that you were bringing to the community you know talk about teamwork for a second and how important it is to elevate others to elevate yourself you know, that is, that I've always said that's the key. You know, everyone has to be united to one, right? And we always treat everyone like family here. And I think that's the key when you talk about the community, when you're going out to the community and you're bringing the community to you. Everyone wants to be treated respectfully, but everyone wants to be treated like they're part of your family. And, and that's one thing I've been blessed to be able to do is uh, treat everyone like family. I tell people all the time, I don't do business because business sucks, as we both know. Uh, but when you treat people and you can do a family partnership and deal, it's the most amazing thing out there because people want to know that you care. You know, it doesn't matter how much you, uh, how much you know, it's how much you care. And to be great leaders, right? We have to care first. That is, that's the key. And for me, people that I see every single day, I care first. Uh, and then I can be a great leader because that's the only way I'll be successful as being a leader in this world. You know, it's so amazing. There's two things that I teach that you exemplify. One is you sell through people. You don't sell to them. You're selling through them by empowering them. And then, like I said, from the time I entered the facility, everybody was talking about how kind you were, what you were doing. Nobody was talking about the business, right? It was all about mm -hmm. the kindness, the inspiration, the empowerment. Um, and then the second thing that most people don't realize, and I got this from Brett about you, was you're an intelligent follower that makes you a leader. You know, mm -hmm. the, the people that are intelligent followers become great leaders by following with intelligence and with inspiration, you know, what are some of the best lessons that you learned playing with the Packers for so long, you know, what, that carried over into the business world? Were there a couple lessons or at least one that comes to mind that you can share with us? That no one owes you anything. Oh, wow. You know, that, that's the key, that no one owes you anything. Because sometimes we think that people owe us. Uh, at the end, if you spend... 14 years playing in the National Football League for one organization. Uh, if you spent 25 years working in a corporate office and you've helped that you know, organization, that corporation grow to what it is today, at the end of it, you feel like someone owes you everything. They should send you off with, you know, on a carriage, riding a horse and should praise you for everything you do. But I've learned the lesson that no one owes you anything. You have to work for everything. And at the end of the day, all we want to do is be respected, right? And so if I can leave with people that's on this call and people that may see this around the world is to understand that no one owes you anything. Um, and go into every single, every single situation knowing that they don't owe me anything. I have to work for whatever thing I do. And I think that's how most people come successful, you know, because we have, there's four things, David, that people struggle with. Uh, that's fear, there's doubt, there's insecurity and worry. And I tell people all the time, you're going to always have three of those, but you won't have one of them. Uh, and that's, you will always worry, you will always have doubt, and you will always have fear. But insecurity, no one should ever have. You should know who you are as a person, because that's going to make all those issues that you may think you have go completely away. 
And for me, that's why I continue to strive and live my life with that. I will. As a father, we're going to have fear. We're going to have doubt. And we're going to have worry, right? We have girls that, you know, I'm, you got girls. I got girls. We, you know, <laughs> you're going to have that fear. Yeah. But the insecurity part of it, as a male and a female, we should never have. Uh, I tell my daughters all the time, they have all the power in the world. They control it. And when they can believe that they know who they are as a woman, then they're going to be very successful in this world. Um, the same thing I teach my son. You know, treat women with respect. But at the end of the day, you got to you got to you got to be who you are. And uh, and it's been great. And so that's why, you know, we keep doing what we do. Yeah. And in your book, Driven as well, you talk about basically learning to love you. Right. And how you had to learn to love you and all the people that laugh, scoff at you, make fun of you. Eventually, when you prove them wrong, they applaud you. And my main mission in life, which you're helping me with, is to empower over a billion people simply to be happy. You know, and we empower a thousand people like Donald and Plowers, a thousand people to empower a thousand people. We literally, regardless of the election, regardless of, you know, the politics that exist today that are trying to separate us, we actually can change the world by uniting everybody with kindness, with love, and with abundance, that there is enough of everything for everyone. And you are an example of that, an icon for all of us. And, you know, I'm so excited to get my size nine shoes from Moral Code. <laughs> I'm going to hit up everybody. Uh, I will buy a pair and save a pair for the collector's item. And I'll be paying for my 10-year-old's college with those shoes when I finally <laughs> sell them. They're going to be worth so much. Uh, man, thank you so much. Come on the playbook. Let's do this again. Uh, I know people can find you at Donald underscore driver 80. Moralcode.com. Driver 80 is the discount code that you provided for everybody. Anywhere driver, else you want to drive people? No driver pun intended. 20. Anywhere else you want to drive people? <laughs> Uh, Driver20 is the code that you can use to uh, get your discount on the, 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 the more code items right now, but then also the driver shoes that will be coming out uh, late 2021. So, uh, no, I, I think you say thank you again for having me on. I really appreciate it to everyone that's on the call. We love you guys. It's truly, it's truly a blessing. Uh, I'll, leave awesome. you guys, I'll leave you guys with this. Is, uh, you know, whatever you want to do in life, dream big. Don't let someone else tell you you can't do it because dreams do come true. I uh, love you guys. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Love you, man. Great to see you. Take care. That's driver 20. Donald, don't, don't put driver 80. They're not going to give you an 80% discount. Uh, I'd screw up the company with that thing. It's driver 20. Uh, anyway, unbelievable guy. Buy his book, buy his shoes, go to Moral Code. Uh, be driven, most importantly. The most common denominator is the need, desire that you must be what you can be. And Donald Driver absolutely has proven dream big you cannot out ask the universe you cannot out ask the universe remember that keep asking ask bigger and bigger and bigger and it will come to you we're going to talk about that on friday uh if you can't make my friday i've been doing them 20 years free trainings then just get the downloads they're free uh spotify entrepreneur every platform featured on there just go ahead grab it uh you know we hit three million downloads last week i'm so excited you can get this for free if you don't want my exercise and my guys, those books that Donald had, just go david at dmelter.com or join my text community, 949-298-2905. Uh, awesome. Let's take a few more questions. Gosh, that guy's so awesome, by the way. Sometimes I get someone on here and they just change me. When did you first discover manifestation? Uh, totally didn't believe it until I met uh, Dr. Sangeeta Sahi from India. Uh, who told me about quantum healing, theta, med theta meditation, and manifestation, started to watch The Secret, uh, which I had resistance to. I thought that I controlled everything, and now I control my persistent, consistent enjoyment in pursuit, but I don't uh, control uh, what I'm already connected to, everything. Uh, we're just a parentheses between limitless and infinity. We're parentheses uh, here of, of what we want. We come from nowhere with nothing and now we're here now here with everything and then we'll go back to nowhere with no thing in abundance that's a interesting parentheses of the existence that we live in uh let's keep it coming here questions keep them coming we love them how do you dismiss disturbance and return to peace i have a four-step process of uh getting back to center i am a ferocious buddha so number one, I actually practice identifying disturbance. I actually practice identifying when I'm in an ego-based consciousness. 
uh, what Donald was talking about. I actually practice identifying the needs uh, of the ego, the need to be right. I'd like to practice knowing, gosh, you sure sound like you have a need to be right, the need to be offended, the need to be separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, worried, resentful, any of these needs that just create an interference and accelerate me in the wrong direction. I've practiced that. And then I know that when I'm in that state of mind and my mindset is off, that my mind, body, soul are all on fire. And then if I want to manifest what I want, I have to, just like I catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll. I have to be ferocious to stop. I have to be a Buddha to drop down to center to breathe. And then once again, be ferocious and persistent and consistent and enjoying that pursuit and just moving in the direction that I want to be in. What is one of the practices you would not go without? Humility, uh, you know, is one asking for help is being humble. Finding the people that sit in the situation like Donald Driver that I wanna be in and I wanna be as driven as that man and ask them for help. Like we did, we brought him on here to share his playbook and uh, we can do that. Do you have to educated to be a business person? No. No, you need emotional intelligence, adaptable intelligence. You, the only education you need is to find the people that sit in the situation you want to be in and be uh, efficient, effective, and statistically successful. Be people with math. How do you define your higher self? My potential is my higher self. It's an aggregate of my conscious, subconscious, and unconscious competencies all together. It's what I think, say, do, believe, and my personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions that have been inherited down from at least four generations at great grandparents, grandparents, parents to me. How to make more money from exporting with low budget. Reverse engineer your sale, right? It, it, there's so many things to sell. Find and pre-sell things, know what they sell for, and create a margin of millionaires backwards. I can teach you that. Uh, come to uh, old trainings or email me for the exercise on buy low, sell high, uh, david at dmelzer.com. If you want to see that training or get the free exercises and guides on buying low, selling high, david at dmelzer.com. Favorite mantras. Uh, I am worthy. I am grateful. I am forgiving. I am accountable. Uh, I'm worthy of everything that I have and will have. Uh, and I am kind. These are great mantras uh, to, to reiterate. Uh, here we go. Are you excited for the Major League Baseball playoffs? I am so excited because first time in 14 years, the San Diego Padres are in the playoffs. San Diego doesn't have many teams left, but that is a team since Tony Gwynn uh, that I have been following. Tony Gwynn, a dear friend of mine who's passed away, a dear friend of mine who was the epitome of humility, who even at a young age had the San Diego School of Baseball and helped 12 year olds like myself and many others be and pursue our potential. What Tony Gwynn taught me, by the way, more than anything was to be a student, to pay attention to and give attention to the coincidences I want, as great as he was, right? He played guard at San Diego State, uh, made the NCAA tournament with Michael Cage. He was the greatest modern day uh, average hitter of all time, meaning, you know, 394. Uh, he batted over 400 from July to July one season. Uh, you're talking about a guy who uh, studied everything. I remember back on the beta machine at the San Diego School of Base Baseball with Alan Trammell, and he would go back and forth with his beta max in, in a monochrome screen, watching the exact release point again and again and again and again. And then everybody wondered how he went four for five has the highest batting average against uh, Craig Maddox, some of the greatest pitchers, and uh, in the playoffs, even batted higher. Uh, incredible focus, attention plus intention. Tony Gwynn, the, I'm so excited for the playoffs, and uh, I hope that the San Diego Padres elevate themselves. Tatis, uh, oh, man, he just loves to play, and the whole team is coming together. Anyway, I digress. Here we go. You talk about being more accessible for selling, but what does that actually mean? So accessibility is a, uh, a bifocal of a lens. It means being accessible to others. In other words, 
providing value or service the 120 rule that not only energetically but quantitatively being able to articulate a hundred dollars worth of value for every 20 that i receive uh, but it also means accessing what i want asking for what i want asking for the sale asking confidently guaranteeing the value guaranteeing what we do uh so you know remember that bifocal ask how you can be of service or value ask for help find the people that sit in the situation part of manifestation as well join me friday david at dmelzer.com to join me or my text community you can join that at 949-298-2905 uh very good keep the questions coming by the way thank you what's your take on luck how much does it play a part in our lives see i believe in a mathematical formula of luck Attention plus intention equals the coincidences in my life. Uh, coincidences most people consider to be luck. I think you have to pay attention to what you want, give intention to it, the aggregate of what we think they do believe, and those unconscious competencies of characteristics, obsessions, addictions, personality traits, all those things. Oh, look, Christina, your dad is amazing. And I love when my daughters come on. Thank you for coming on. Please follow me if you want any books, anything. And don't forget to tell your dad I want those shoes, size nine. Welcome, Christine, the driver. Uh, your dad is incredible. Apples don't fall far from the tree, so I'm sure you are as well. Love to get you together with our girls. Uh, thank you for joining me. Special shout out to Christina. Uh, thank you, Jake, as well. Colleen, you got the mathematical equation of luck right there for everyone to look at. Uh, here we go. Keep the questions coming. What? Would your advice about borrowing to invest? Look, it's all about timing and risk tolerance investing. What is your timing? What is your risk tolerance in doing the math? Solidifying the risk tolerance by reverse engineering with expertise, with the math, with security, a whole bunch of different variables can afford you a security in that risk tolerance determined upon what you want. But if you have not determined your own risk tolerance and timing, you're not ready to invest in anything. And so if you're going to borrow, then you have a mathematical equation to do because it's the time value of money to the risk value that you're giving it and utilizing expertise and stagnant, uh, stable data in order to effectuate determining that is the key to the statistical success that you have. I have paid a ton of dummy tax to learn that. Right, I always joke around, but you know, if I reached out to everyone in here and said, hey, no problem, I'd like to pay your federal and state taxes for the next 20 years, all of you would be pinging David at dmeltzer.com. You'd be joining my text community at 949-298-2905, but I'm gonna pay a bigger tax than that. I can't pay your state taxes. I can't pay your federal taxes, but what I can pay is your dummy tax because I've already paid it in the multitudes of millions, if not billions. So please let me pay your dummy tax, learn, ask for help, come and join me for trainings on Friday. If you miss them, just go ahead and watch the replay on Spotify or Entrepreneur or any other of the platforms. Oh my gosh, it's my Hi, lucky David. day. Hi, Ever, how are you? I'm doing so good, how about you? I am doing so well, and now I'm doing better because I see you. Miles is going to be jealous. He told me to say hello. He has to go to school. He's really good at doing the lives. I loved it. I'm going to watch it every Monday. <laughs> That's so good. My Miles, my Miles Monday, the Miles Graham. Well, what are you up to right now? Well, I am about ready to go to L.A. I've been working on some huge projects, um, like my This Backpack Saves Lives, which you may see on my Instagram. So I've been more pivoting during the pandemic than panicking. Because... <laughs> <I> love... <laughs> Let everyone know how old you are with your great wisdom, because you are an old soul. How old are you now, Ever? I'm 11. 11. You know, that's one of my lucky numbers. I was born on January 11th, and it's the sign of the angel, and it's a great year. And you obviously are years above where you are now. Um, when you talk about pivoting, not panicking, what are some of the things you're doing to pivot and not panic? So a lot of people have been um, just staying at home, not really doing much, watching Netflix. But I've been working on some of my next big ideas. Like I said, my This Backpack Saves Lives. We're going to be providing over 5,000 backpacks for homeless and at-risk youth. And I have been reading my weekly books um, 
I read a book every um, Monday. I got a lot of books right here. And I read a book every Monday. Book What's one of your I... favorite books you've read recently? Well, recently, I'd have to say Shoe Dog. Shoe Dog is my... Um, that's Bill, my... Knight, Bill Knight's book. Yes. That I is... read that book. I love that book. What was your, your favorite lesson from that book? So I love how it talks about um, his journey, how he went from like sucks to success, like everything, oh, <laughs> every little thing that he went through, like just to get where he is today, like all of the little problems that he had to go through to become Nike, like the brand that you see on everybody's shoes, like just how he went from down to up. And for you, you're only 11 years old. Are you aware of any of the difficulties that you've gone through that have helped you? Because you're so far beyond your own eight years. You have your own foundation, Child Hunger Sucks. People can find you at Child Hunger Sucks. I love the name Child Hunger Sucks. You literally have dedicated your life since you've been half your age, since I've known you, to helping other people, allowing things to come through you. Give us one lesson that you've learned because most people don't realize what challenges 11 year olds face that have put you in a better place, a better position, a better situation. Well, um, I spoke at some events with you and you always see that I have my little bucket of lollipops that I carry around with me. And because of quarantine, I was unable to sell my lollipops. And that's what I've been doing my whole life. So we're like, what are we gonna do? And that's like when it came to me, like, I can't just wait here and watch Netflix in my home. I have to like think of my next big idea. So I started doing more stuff online. You saw the donate one plate challenge where I tried raising um, 1 million meals for Feeding America. And I'm not done with that yet. I have a really big idea that I'm going to be doing to raise the million meals. But I had to move a lot of my stuff online. Like everything has to be like digital now because I can't go out and sell my lollipops. So I had to change things to be digital. I love that. And you do such a great job. The other thing that you do with such confidence uh, that you are have the radical humility of a 50 year old, meaning that <laughs> you've learned to ask for help. And, you know, I have tried to teach my children. I have three beautiful daughters and Miles who you know, uh, and I'm constantly trying to teach them. You need to be able to ask you, everyone inherently like you, not to the level you are, but are of service, of value, of, of trying to do well for others. But we, especially at 11, you know, we can't give what we don't have. And so you're so terrific and gracious about politely asking for help. And as you know, not everybody can help all the time, but you're so good at continually, persistently, politely, maintaining a relationship so that when people have the availability and the capability that you're on the top of their list to help. And I know I feel that way about you. I can't always help every single time. And I'm, I'm so torn when I see you. I'm like, oh, I really want to have her on. And as things are getting more organized in my life, I want to do more with you and for you because you are an angel on earth. Uh, Evan Carmichael's here too, and I'm sure he's going to help promote us uh, and ever, you got to, Evan, you got to help me promote this wonderful young lady who is years beyond her age in helping other people. So thank you, Evan, for joining me. Um, anyway, where did you get the confidence at such a young age to ask for help? Mentors like you. From all of the mentors and the books I've read, you have to have confidence. Like speaking on stage, a lot of people are afraid to do that, but you just have to like learn from entrepreneurs like you. And like you were saying, like to have, to ask, to ask for help, like for mentors, like I'm learning from mentors like you to have the confidence that I have today. <laughs> and the last and thing I, I want to, Last thing I want to talk about is you You glow. People are commenting how wonderful, beautiful, how glowing you are. You're an angel on earth. You have this um, unbelievable light. We're going to tell Evan how you can help with the backpacks and with Child Hunger Sucks and promote helping all of the, the poor people that we help. Uh, but that light comes from a happiness. You know, a lot of people right now are not happy. What's your best piece of advice to people to look for the light, the love and the lessons and what they're doing to find the light that you have to find the happiness and share it with other people? 
serving people. Serving people, you can find happiness from serving people. I love giving back more than I like receiving because I think seeing other people, like when we give back to the homeless community, like seeing the smiles on their faces is what motivates you and helping them like get out of their situations that they're in because serving people can make you happy. Serving is, I think, giving back. And I'd say right now, a good piece of advice is giving back, but like in this, in 2020, pivot during the pandemic. Cause right now is the best time. You may have your best idea yet while everybody else is not doing much. So. <laughs> and you are like my other friend, Donald Driver. You are driven and he has a great book that you need to read called Driven. It's a New York Times bestseller. So put that on your Monday morning reading list. I know you've read all my books. You've read Napoleon Hill. You've read all of my friends' books, Phil Knight. <laughs> you have them all there. Just look at that. Amazing. Have you read um, James Clear, Atomic Habits? Um, is it The Habit Loop or is it a No, no. Uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's a book you should really read. And then also... Evan's book, you got to grab as well. I could grab it over here. There's Leading with Gratitude that you can read, but Evan has his book. We'll get that to you. Um, keep on reading, keep on learning, keep on surrounding yourself with the right people and the right ideas. Keep helping others and keep asking me for help and allowing me to ask others for help as well. Last piece of advice for everyone before you go. Yes. Um, well, before I go, I have something to tell you. Yes. I'm hosting my first ever virtual business summit on my on not my birthday but a little past it december 1st and i'd like you to come and speak i'm gonna have some of my favorite entrepreneurs and mentors who've helped me along the way to come and speak and it's it's gonna be amazing and i'm super excited because you're the first person that i get to tell you that about oh well i will be there and what day is your birthday as well my birthday is in 16 days, October 15th, and the goal- Colleen, did you hear that? You and Colleen, you know Colleen that works with me? She's the president of David Meltzer Enterprises. That's her birthday as well. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> you have a birthday twin, and Evan's book is Built to Serve, so we'll get you that book. It's built for you, because you're built to serve. And uh, your birthday's October 15th. Y'all all remember and celebrate this wonderful, wonderful guest. We absolutely, I will be at your summit. I will also garner all of my friends, the biggest speakers in the world to come Thank join you so at much. your summit. I would love to do that as well. And please join me again so we can promote your birthday. Come back and join me as well as the summit. Uh, and everybody can find you Thank at you. Child Hunger Sucks, right? Yes. I've learned so much from you, David, and I'm super excited that you get to be a part of this. And we're going to raise one, we're going to try to raise one million meals on December 1st for my birthday. All right. We're not going to limit yourself. We're going to try to raise over one yes, million meals. Yes, over. You cannot out ask the universe. That's my girl ever. I adore you. You please keep on keeping on. Stay pivoting and positive with your passion and purpose. We love you. Thank you for joining me. Oh, and. Hi, Evan. By the way, I just wanted to say hi to Evan as well. <laughs> cool. Perfect. We'll get you his book as well. Thank you. Take care. Bye, David. Thank you so much. You got it. Have a wonderful time. Bye-bye. The incredible ever uh, at Child Hunger Sucks. Could I get two better gaps? I don't think so. Evan Carmichael, thank you so much. Uh, Built to Serve, unbelievable book. Colleen, your birthday twin is amazing like you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you haven't Talk to Colleen. You can email us, david at dmelter.com. Uh, every Friday, she's there. Uh, she's been with me uh, for a long time, helping build Team David Meltzer to the best that we can. Join my text community, 949-298-2905. Uh, every Friday, we do training. This one's on manifestation. If you miss any of the trainings, the Ultimate Ego Training, Five to Thrive Sales System, Buy Low, Sell High, uh, how to pitch, whatever you want. All you have to do is go to david at dmelter.com. All of the podcasts, over 3 million uh, downloads, uh, is available on Spotify, on Entrepreneur, on all the platforms featured on Entrepreneur, featured on uh, Spotify. 
uh, really blessed to be with Spotify and with the unbelievable Joe Rogan coming on. It's going to be incredible. Is that CJ Anderson? We are still on for tomorrow, correct? And thank you. Look at that. Evan Carmichael and CJ Anderson together, both verified, two heroes, two legends together. Uh, talk about giving back. CJ Anderson, unbelievable uh, running back, Super Bowl champion. If you didn't see him in the Denver uh, Super Bowl, but more importantly, what a comeback when the Rams uh, made the Super Bowl, carried that team on his back. He's incredible and a dear friend and a great entrepreneur, by the way. So is Evan, a great entrepreneur. You can get Evan's book uh, at his website as well as on Amazon. So just check it out, Built to Serve. And if you want my book, my books are free. All you got to do is email me, david at dmelter.com. My exercises, guides, and trainings are all free. David at dmelter.com or join my text community, 949-298-2905. You got it. Here, let's answer a few more questions. Um, what's up? I like that. <laughs> okay. Where does self-confidence come from? Practice. Self-confidence comes from practice. It comes from the enjoyment and the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. Practice. If you can do something as easily as you can clap, you'll be confident. If I asked you right now to come on here and clap, everybody would be confident. If I asked you to stand on a stage in front of 100,000 people and clap, you would be confident. If I asked you to stand in front of a TV in front of billions of people and clap, you would be confident. So if you can practice what you want to do, as easy as you can clap, you will be confident. Practice, 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 practice. And most importantly, enjoy the practice. Enjoy the practice. Find the light, the love, and the lessons, and the suck. Find it. Everyone's life sucks equally. It's the people that can find the light, the love, and the lessons, and the suck that have that common denominator of success to be what they must be, built to serve, to provide value to others, but most importantly, understand that they cannot out-ask the universe. You cannot out-ask big enough. Keep the questions coming. Thank you, everyone. My coach used to tell me good preparation equals good luck. Yeah, preparation is attention and intention. Practice, and it equals coincidences. Same exact thing. Good preparation equals good luck. Great saying. Great coach. Uh, here we go. I went to not the best college. Uh, well, they, if they had books, if they had teachers, it would uh, we find what's equal to and then appreciate the differences. Should I get a certificate from Harvard in alternative investments to help my resume? Look, Harvard does two things for you. Two things. One, credibility. Credibility is extremely important. If you're 100% credible, people will do what you say. Nobody's 100% credible, but the closer you are to credible, the closer people will do what you say. The second thing that they do is put you in a network, uh, the network of all the other Harvard graduates or a network of all the other Ivy League graduates or a network of the hyper intelligent and academic. Uh, so those are two things that are of value to you that you can maximize and quantify that value, then go to Harvard and utilize it on your resume to accentuate your credibility and the relationship capital and the spheres of influence that you want to support. Ever right there, Child Hunger Sucks. Thank you so much. Anytime you come on. And Evan, thank you for your support. All right, last question. Before I remind you about training, <laughs> I went to not the, oh, I, that's a repetitive question. Let me get a different one. Sorry, guys. Um, here we go. Uh, here we go. What's the best lesson a coach ever taught you? Woo! I think be kind to my future self and do good deeds. The, simply, it was so amazing the enlightenment that I ever had when I asked her for that lesson about, you know, pivoting and pivoting was about doing good for others. If you look upon everything, every person, every place with kindness, you will be kind to your future self. If you do good deeds, if you're feeling down, anxious, frustrated, angry, resentful, offended, separate, inferior, superior, worried, do a good deed. It'll heal all. It's the highest frequency to be kind to our future self by doing good deeds. And simple deeds, deeds have no size to me. It's the deeds when no one's looking, the deeds when everyone's looking, taking out the, picking up the trash, putting back grocery carts, smiling at someone, waving hello, 
making someone feel good, whatever it may be, do good deeds. And I promise you, your life will change. You will manifest everything you desire. We're going to teach manifestation on Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Please sign up for the training and the replays of the training. Uh, it's featured on Spotify, on Entrepreneur, uh, the playbook. We got extraordinary playbooks to success. Uh, please join me. All you got to do is email me for guides, exercises, training, whatever you want, david at dmeltzer.com or join my text community, 949-298-2905. Kate, welcome, my dear. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to see you on there. I do recognize you. There's so many of you going by. If I missed you, just come back. I'll try to recognize you. Uh, please, everybody, uh, please join me Fridays or watch the replays. That's all I'm asking. Most importantly, as I've stated several times, thank you so much, Donald Driver unbelievable Super Bowl champion, the all-time leader in receiving yards for 14 years with the Green Bay Packers. And of course, the delightful October 15th through birthday, Colleen, ever with at Child Hunger Sucks. Join me and them. My text community is 949-298-2905. Evan Carmichael, have a great day. Email me, david at dmeltzer.com. Always a pleasure. Gemma, I know you will be there. Remember everyone, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.